you want to fight the night, I don't think that lasts a No. Time. But I want something up the night. I want the extra bonus for sure. Do you think it, that is deserving after watching these fights happen right now? I mean, I mean, I think that's gonna be, I think that's gonna be tough to top. No, I mean, you guys know better than I do. I was just, I was just in there. Sure. Yeah. We were expecting, I think, a, a pretty high pace, crazy fight between you two. It, it panned out that way. I mean, is that what you were expecting going in there? Oh, absolutely, man. I, Boston is an awesome, awesome dude. I, I like, I love him as a person, and I love him as a fighter. He's, he's very, very entertaining, and I think, like, just like I said. When you put our styles together, it has to be a fireworks show. Um, someone was someone was going down. It was the inevitable. Uh, we were both throwing bombs. You know, he caught me with a good left hand off the, off the bat, and I knew I didn't want to get caught with those again. That kid has bricks behind those hands. Um, man, it, it was that was I, we broke everything down that he was doing, and, that, and and it was like I saw the fight happening in my head four thousand times before I even walked out. And it was just it was just so cool to see it unravel the way that we had we had thought it would. Like so you got caught a little bit, but pretty flawless, I thought overall. I mean, how, how would you evaluate your execution of the tonight? Man, I think everything I did, besides get besides getting hit with that left hand, I thought everything was 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 very good. You know, I have I have such little experience, and I think I showed myself as you know being composed and, and fighting as a professional. I think I fought very calm and relaxed and picked my shots very well. Tag pull away, tag, pull away, get on the fence, and then just slow everything down and relax, and then pressure, pressure, pressure when he's hurt, but don't get too overzealous like I did in the past. You know, I said, I said last time, or in, from my last fight, that was, I, I thought I took more positives than negatives, and I think I showed what I learned from the last fight into this fight, and I'm just so excited for the future. Yeah, and your story is pretty well told at this point, but I mean, you have the picture with you even now. I mean, give us an idea, just kind of the emotion and, and, and what you're feeling like right now. Seems like this is a dream come true. There, there really aren't any words, man. It's just insane, you know? Had I won my debut in Atlanta, it would not mean as much. Um, you know, I get to come back home in front of his family now, in front of all his friends, you know, all of his teachers and classmates and, and, and family and all this stuff, and then my friends. Now I get to use my platform to get his name across. Now, now it's no longer about myself. It's, it's much bigger than myself, and it's just so cool that I was able to do it in the garden. And man, it, it's just incredible. It's so it's so awesome. Now that you're coming off this win, you know, you can decide what's next. Uh, when are you looking at uh, getting back in there and is there an, op an opponent in mind? So I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going out to Cancun, Mexico. So unless I, I'm, uh, this week. So if I can fight, if I can find a 135 that will fight me at 185 before the end of the year, then I'll definitely be back before the end of the year. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to have to wait until early 2020. Did you do any commentary this time in Cancun like last time? <laughs> oh, if, they, if, they're, if they're looking for some sort of uh, a dual translator, then I'm, then I'm sure I can, you know, figure something out. Okay. What was the walk out to the octagon like? You had the song picked out. You had visualized it. You, you knew what to expect. Did it live up to expectations for you? Yeah, man. And, and I, I said in our past interviews that I didn't want to get wrapped up in that moment just yet. Um, I wanted everything to settle down and then and then look back out at it afterwards. And I was saying to my coaches that you know my you know warming up for this fight, I did things a lot different. I I didn't warm up and go crazy in the back room like I normally do. Normally I'm sweating like a dog. I'm getting I'm getting that burst out and and kind of you know rushing the adrenaline too fast. And with this one, I didn't really warm up too much. I just kind of paced back and forth and just kept playing the, the fight in my head. And it, it did exactly what we thought it would do. And it was just, I felt so calm in there, like nothing has changed. Now that the fight's over, I'm just like, dude, holy shit, that was just, that was, that was just one in the, in the garden. Bro, that's the garden. I just won in the garden. Like, that's madness. At the end, Boston questioned the finish. He didn't, he didn't think the, the stoppage should have happened. What did you think of it? I mean, you were in there, you really into those shots. Did you, did you agree with the stoppage? I, I was surprised that it didn't. I thought I hit him a couple more times. Um, like, I thought it should have been stopped a couple other times that hit him. Um, but Herb Dean knows exactly what he's doing. Um, you know, when you get hit like that, something is obviously, uh, you, have, you have a false sense of reality. So he, I'm sure if he's looking at it now, maybe he has a different thought and that's just, you know, being wrapped up in the moment. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm not, I, I think that was a great stoppage. I hit him with, you know, a bunch of right hands. I hit, I hit him, I heard him from the beginning and then I just kept capitalizing, capitalizing. My thoughts aren't forming like very good right now because I see Reese's right there and I hope those are coming to me. <laughs> Thank you, man. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, brother. Can you hold those up just to see exactly what the Reese's are? Yeah, go. yeah, we're good now. So I, I would like to get a Reese's sponsor, her, she sponsors it at some point. So this would be a great plug, I think. So I think this is a great outlet. Go ahead. Randy. Yeah. Uh, you spoke about Boston and how much you liked him, you guys got along. He's 0-2 now in the UFC. What advice would you give him? I mean, I'm not really one to be given advice. I have I have such minimal, you know, experience. But you know, I know he's a savage. He's he's an awesome dude. His work ethic is second to none. I know he's gonna bounce back from this. I know it. Um, I don't know if you guys saw my Instagram and Twitter, but which is which is pretty cool is that before the weigh-ins, I got I looked at my phone and my my parents sent me a picture and it was 
my parents and his parents together watching the weigh-ins. I was like, dude, hold, like this is so cool. I went up and showed him. When I showed him, he gave me this gift bag from Hawaii. I'm like, dude, you cool. guys, this is so cool. Like, this, yeah. there's, you know, people get this 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 crazy perception in the sport where you where you need to be a dickhead, you need to talk shit, this and that, but you don't need to do all this stuff, man. Sure. It's like, be respect. It's just, it's a it's a sport. Like, have some respect. It's just. I, I I love Bob. He's an awesome dude, and I know he's gonna come. I know he's gonna bounce back strong. Speaking of respect, obviously people sometimes disrespect you. One of the criticisms about you was he didn't have experience. He wasn't ready for the UFC after the Brandon Davis. How does it feel to silence those critics? Man, I someone's gonna have something else to say. It, it, I don't really. It doesn't bother me at all. I honestly, I was clicking on the UFC like the UFC Boston hashtag on the way here, and I was just sitting there laughing like, dude, these people are so stupid. Like, why are these people saying these stupid things? Like. Obviously, someone's gonna say, "Oh, it's just Boston. He was already 0-1. He was blah blah blah." But it doesn't. Just shut up, dude. Like I kept my job tonight, and I'm I'm gonna keep showing that, you know, I belong in this. I belong to compete in the best. And at one at one day, I'm gonna be, you know, amongst the best for sure. Right. If you go back even to the beginning of the year, I mean, when we did our interview. You were talking about maybe getting on Contender Series. Now you have two fights in the UFC, one win. Have you been able to soak that in just to, you know, go from where you were at the beginning of the year to now? Man, I I, I spoke this into reality. You know, there was there was interviews from like last. November at one after my uh, my third professional fight, I said I will be in the, I will be in the UFC by the end of 2019. I will. Everyone's like, dude, you're not. You have you know minimal experience. And now I can say like, I, not only am I in the UFC, but now I have a win in the UFC, and that you can never take away from me. You know, it's just it's it's just incredible. And, and I'm a product of the people I surround myself with, and I surround myself with nothing but the best. You know, all the guys at Lowe's and MMA, Triforce, you know, all these guys are just you know great role models, mentors, and coaches, and, and they guide me along. And, I, and I'm just a product of them, and I'm just going to keep. Working my ass off and, and, and keep keep climbing to where I want to where I want to be. Did you say you kept your job tonight? Is that what you? I kept my job. Yeah. Was there pressure on you? Did you think that if you lost, you would get another shot? Yes, absolutely. I mean, uh, being coming into this fight four and one, you know, you look at it, I was I was four and zero oh getting the call to the UFC. Yeah. I won the lottery essentially, right? If I lost, I lost the one. I was four and one. They're gonna give me another shot, take it on short notice. If I lost that one, now I'm four and two. You're not gonna have a four and two fighter in the UFC. That's in the back of my mind. I don't let that like play in like. I don't let that affect it, but I knew I knew that was a reality. If I lost that fight, I was probably gonna have to go back to the local scene and then get my way back in. But now that you know, now that I won the fight and in, in, in a decisive way, an exciting way, I think I, I think I definitely bought myself some time and showed myself that I'm 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 here to stay. I'm not just here. I'm, getting here wasn't the goal. Staying here is the goal. Is that when you you were talking about a lot of fight of the night and I asked you like not a lot of people want fight of the night performance of the night, but you normally guys don't get cut off a of fight of the night. Yeah. Is that did that play a factor? Like even if I lose, it'll be a great fight, and maybe I'll get a third chance. I mean, that's always. I think. I think my style is amongst some of the, like one of the best like fan friendly styles. Mm -hmm. Nothing makes sense out of what I'm doing. It's everything's wild. The kicks are insane. It looks like I have two blown ACLs. Nothing makes sense, but it's fun to watch. People like to see that stuff, so I'm gonna keep doing it, and I, I hope I get that that performance of the night bonus tonight. We've been talking about New England talent all week long. But it's just this area of New England right now, specifically Massachusetts, where you're from. A couple weeks ago, we saw Yogi DeCastro from Fall River getting a win. You're from Taunton, right next door, getting a win. What's going on in that area? Something's in the water, man. <laughs> I mean, that's the only explanation. I mean, we have, if you look at all the guys that are progressing, it's all, all these guys are coming over to Lowe's on May on, on Saturday mornings. Everyone's training with the best. Yeah. You know, there, there was this, I, th I feel like there was this negative stigma before where you want to train with the guys that are just a part of your camp. And I think now that that's, that's, that stigma is now eliminated, I think everyone's kind of growing together and it's going to show in the New England MMA scene. You know, now we have all the, the highest level guys training with each other all the time and we're all making a name, you know, in the biggest show in the world. I want to ask you one more question. You're talking about your training partners, obviously Devin's so close to yeah. your heart. I asked you the other day, what would he say before you fight? What would he say to you now after you got your UFC win? He said you did it, but you took a little bit too long. <laughs> That's it. What's the after party looking like tonight? Um, I'm going to eat all these for probably about 10 minutes after I get out of here. I'm going to go to North End. I'm going to smash all the cannolis. Then I'm going to go to Insomnia Cookies, smash all the cookies. I'll probably be like 2.05 by the time I wake up tomorrow morning. You going to share some of them with us? Next question. <laughs> <laughs> I got a gorilla tattoo on your leg. What's the story behind that? Um, that's Harambe, yeah. Harambe was that girl, the gorilla in Cleveland. <laughs> yeah. Cincinnati. Yeah, Cincinnati. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's not the same without him. Yeah. Is that really Harambe or is that just a gorilla? No, that's Harambe, man. Harambe? Yeah. Oh, man, it just hurts. Yeah, no. Give his name? No, no, it's just the gorilla head. Randy, uh, I don't know if you knew this, but at 6 o'clock in the first prelim fight, there was already a We Want Costa, uh, Costa chance. How many shoeies did you guys see at 6 o'clock? <laughs> How special is your fan base? I mean, they're loyal. 
it's 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 second to none. Everyone's just a complete maniac, man. You know, I I only live like 40, 40 minutes down the street, and I had to make sure I didn't stay at my house because every time during fight week, dude, all my idiot friends are literally taking chewies but using their old boxing gloves, bro. It's oh, fucking oh. disgusting. So I'm like, dude, I gotta get out of there. Like sending me videos, drinking out of like, dude, like. <laughs> Like the, the Air Dads, like the New Balances yeah. with the straps, yeah. the drinking out of those and like drinking out of like old boxing gloves. I'm like, dude, you guys are just mad to stop Snapchatting me this stuff right now. You mentioned the pressure to win to keep your job. What about the pressure to win in front of your hometown crowd? What, what did that feel like? I, I don't, I didn't add any extra pressure in that regard because you have to remember I just got into the UFC. I've only had one fight in the UFC. All my other fights were in, this la in the last year were all local. So this was just another local show just on steroids you know it was just it was just a, a bigger arena but like I, I was selling out the local shows all those people followed me here there was it was nothing new all those people that had the, the the Costa crew shirts those are all loyal supporters from day one like I, I have the best friends the best family the best supporters and this it, you're not gonna top that it's 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 truly humbling that's that's really what it is that's, that's a good thing they had your yeah. back either way no win or lose I knew that they were gonna have my back Thank you. Alright guys. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks for the Reese's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a heavy advocate for terrible tattoos. Send it. I got the Spanish people.